Hello, everyone. Welcome to UGA Sports Rumors versus Facts. I am Blaine Gilmer here with Ted May, Trent Smallwood, and we are coming to you live with another episode here covering Georgia football recruiting presented by Turner Wood and Smith Insurance, Auto Owners Insurance, both been around for over 100 years. We'll tell you more about them later in the show. But guys, we have a special guest uh, to start off with. Uh, not going to leave you hanging any longer. You know, from time to time, we have surprise interviews pop up here. And uh, we got we got confirmation on one tonight. It is none other than the number one safety in America in the class of 2024, Mr. Peyton Wood, Woodyard. Peyton, thank you for joining us, man. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely, Jed. You set this. Uh, you set this deal up with uh, with Peyton. You've been been talking to my man. What questions we got right off the bat? Well, you know, I like Peyton because he calls me Mister May, um, so it, it kind of boosts my ego a little bit. But but Peyton, let's let's kind of go back to to how to your recruitment, right? Because you're the number one safety in the country, like Blaine said. You could have gone about anywhere you went. When do you remember first getting interested in Georgia, getting an offer from Georgia? Maybe how did the um, you know interest in the Bulldogs really kind of start out for you? Um, shoot, I, I always tell people this, like the first day I like, I went to Georgia, I talked to Coach Schumann and, uh, he offered me, like, I didn't really think too much of it. It was like, they were still remodeling stuff over there. And it was just like, Hey, yeah, cool. Georgia's cool and everything. But then I came back the second time and then I went to the, the facility in the field and I was like, man, I like Georgia. I feel like I can like stay on this field all day and just, just get some work in uh, with the coaches and just just get better and improve every day so um i feel like that was the day i was like man i don't feel like leaving this place so yeah absolutely uh, man oh go, go ahead Jen. and i was just gonna say you committed at the all-american bowl in in january when was that moment even after that where you were you knew it was going to be georgia and that you were going to be coming um you're going to be coming to coming east to play your college football um it just felt good just being able to let everyone else know at the All American Bowl that I was gonna go to the East Coast and play uh, my college ball, and just it's just very comforting knowing they're gonna get me right and they're gonna get me to the next level um, and make me the best player I can possibly be. Man, you know when it comes to recruiting, it comes to these classes that you guys end up making. I, I like to equate it sometimes to a to to a band coming together, right? There's the lead singer, and then there's all the there's all the uh, in, Guys playing instruments in the back, backup singer, stuff like that. You seem like a guy that wants to be out in front. You're like the lead man of the of the band. You're already out there uh, recruiting guys big time on social media, uh, talking up guys all all behind the scenes. Are is that just something that you, have you always been kind of an outgoing guy, leader like that? And uh, you know, talk to us about kind of assuming that role in this class. Uh, I kind of like to think of myself as like a lead by example type of guy. I feel like. Just like me, like going to Georgia, like made an influence on some people. Like I was talking to Jalen Hayward before I even committed to Georgia. He didn't know I was going to Georgia. And um, when I committed and I talked to him, he's like, man, it, it seems like the move. <laughs> I was like, yeah, bro, it's the move. And he, and he came on over. So I feel like I don't want to force people to come to Georgia. Like if I want people that want to be at Georgia. And like that's what makes teams uh, really special is like people that want to be there and actually work and, um, I've been talking to dudes like Rayola, like I had a relationship with him before, and um, it's a, he's a great dude. And just like Ellis and all those other kids, I like just being being cool with people and having good relationships with people, and just knowing that Georgia is a good place and that they have good good people like me and the other other people. I'm gonna take uh, one more here, Trent, and then I'll, then I'll pass it on to you, man. Just, you, you mentioned Jalen Hayward, you mentioned uh, Ellis there, you know, Ellis Robinson. The yes, secondary, the secondary is already stacked. It seems like, but still, other guys on the radar, stuff like that. Um, just how, just how awesome is it to kind of be a part of what is already turned out to be an elite secondary class? Um, it feels great. I just know it's, it's like only gonna get better. Like, just being able to have Ellis, um, Jalen, two of the two of the top DBs in the nation, if not the best, you know. And then you got me in there, and then. I just feel like we can just get way, way better. I know we're going to have probably a couple more dudes joining us, and I, I can just – I'm just excited to be be a part of this and get each other better each and every day. 
Well, John Adams is pretty excited about your chair, man. He says Peyton's chair is fire. So there you go. Our dog fans are liking your gaming chair over there for sure. All right, Trent, what you got for him? <laughs> I know you mentioned Schumann, um, but being able to come to Georgia and having Kirby Smart, Will Muschamp, Fran Brown, just that trio of of coaches being able to coach you every single day, what 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 kind of impact did that make on your recruitment? Um, of course, Coach Fran, like I have probably the closest re- relationship with, and I talk to that dude like almost every day. Him and Muschamp, um, and then just got Coach Kirby. He was just play safety himself. Him and Muschamp. I just feel like if you're trying to play safety, it doesn't get much better than having your head coach be a safety, your safety coach be a safety, and then you got Fran with the whole secondary just helping out. And just I feel like they're they're really gonna get you right for the next level. And I'm 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 just trying to win a championship there, like maybe all three years while I'm there. So we'll see. <laughs> well, they're on a good well, pace to do that at the uh, rate that they're going. You know that that would that would be the way it, it's headed. Yeah. I, I know that you said that you announced uh, – I mean, you announced at the All-American Bowl. Um, when did you actually let the coaches staff uh, know of your decision of, of what it was ultimately going to be? Um, probably – it was the week of. I let them know. But, like, leading up to that point, like, I knew I wanted to go to Georgia. Like, in my heart, I wanted to go to Georgia. But there's, of course, other things you want to look into. And just – I was, you know – kind of looking, I wanted to look at everything and just take everything into consideration. But at the end of the day, I just told myself, I, I just prayed with my family. I prayed to God and just every day, just talked to him. And I just feel like I wanted to go where my heart was at and Georgia's where my heart is at. So was there a runner up? A runner up? Uh, he ain't going to tell you. Nah, it's, just Georgia, it's just Georgia, man. I love Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's always been Georgia. I love Georgia. So I'll be, I'll be your lifeline on that one. Peyton, I know you ain't going to step in and take that. I'll take the bullet on that one. No, no, <laughs> but, no. but listen, you know, you were sharing with us a little before the show, you know, got a little inspiration back there in the in the background. Uh, so apparently used to – Trent, this would be good for Trent. You used to play a little baseball or still do maybe play some baseball and, uh, and Bo Jackson uh, back there in the background, two, dual sport guy. So how important has that been, do you think, just growing up, being able to – play different sports and, and kind of cross train, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, I like to think I could play like all sports, like on Sundays, sometimes like I wake up in the morning, I'll go with my, my neighbor. He's an older guy and I'll go golf. And then like, I'll go to the park hoop with my dad and LA fitness. And then baseball, I, baseball, football, I played like my whole life growing up. I played baseball before I played football. And then I just stopped playing this year cause I'm just trying to get ready for Georgia and, and just be the best player I can be on on the football field because that's my sport. All right, Trent. You know, with baseball, man, you got you, you got any baseball questions for him so we know what kind of athlete we're dealing with here? What what, what kind of position did you? I mean, what position did you play? Uh, you know, they they throw us football players in the outfield, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But was it but was it right field? Do you got the you got the cannon over there where you can throw somebody out going first to third? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I play. They throw me all in the outfield. But yeah, I play right field a lot this past year uh, for high school. Um and then yeah, yeah, this put pretty much play me all over the outfield and then like I'm fast for football, but baseball I'm like probably like D Gordon out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's real fast. He can run run out there. Jed, yeah. what, what else do you got for uh, Peyton here? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll save the golf conversation for another time, Peyton. I'll, I'll give you a call. On that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess, I guess everyone I'm sure watching the show wants to know who are the guys that you're recruiting to bring with you, the guys that you talk with a lot. And then I guess secondly, kind of like uh, what Blaine mentioned earlier, how much are you embracing the role of being one of the lead recruiters uh, for this class that y'all are still trying to bring together? Um, I'm embracing it a lot. Like I'm always talking to Coach Fran and just trying to see who we're trying to get, and especially in the DB room. Um, I know KJ Bolden. I talk to that dude all the time. That's that's my boy. So um, definitely trying to get him. And then Rayola, I talk to him every day. So um, those are two dudes I'm really recruiting heavy. And then uh, just a couple of like, other names I know, like Sammy Brown, um, Mike Mike Mikey Matthews. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so those just a couple. But I know there's some other dudes that like, we're gonna try to get. And we got OVs coming up June. Was it June second through the fourth? I think I'm gonna yeah, be there. Always that big weekend. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think I told anyone yet, but I'll be there the second through the fourth. So it'll be cool. Being able to Man, I've got to get that DJ Khaled thing in here. Wah, wah, wah. We're breaking news every time when y'all guys <laughs> go in here because guys are breaking news right and left. So, yeah. So, man, that so you're going to be in there June 2nd through 4th. Um, yes, sir. I know Raul is going to be there that week as well for an official visit. You mentioned him being from the West Coast. Of course, Brock Bowers comes from the West Coast. Uh, you know, Darnell Washington out out mm-hmm. West type deal. A lot of guys, Ernest Green, who came from your school, of course, uh, is is at Georgia. So it's really a West Coast movement trying to uh, get a lot of – it's a pipeline from out West to, to Athens, it seems like. What do you what do you think is is that just the messaging George is bringing across, or is it just that's how attractive the program the program is at this point? Um, I don't think it's a movement, but I know Georgia they're gonna go after who they want, and that's what I like about Georgia. If you can play football, you, Georgia's gonna recruit you, and they're gonna get players from everywhere. It's not just Georgia. If you look at their roster, um, and like you said, they have a lot of dudes from the West Coast and. A lot of dudes from the West Coast that go over there, they do pretty well, I like to say. And uh, I'm excited to see what Ernest does this year. And I'm just excited. It's just it's a whole culture of just diversity, of people from different areas, and just all with the same goal of being great at football and just getting it to the next level. Trent, what you got any, one more for him? I got, I got one more after that. I just didn't know if you had another one. Who do you kind of, uh, um, you know – Everybody has that that game where that where they they model their game after somebody in the NFL or, or model their game after a college a current college player. Who's, who do you kind of model your game after? Um, so like I always watch like Earl Thomas highlights, Sean Taylor. Uh, my favorite safety in the league is for sure Derwin James. He's like knock cool. people's heads off. Yeah, so yeah, you want to bring the wood? <laughs> yeah, but a lot of yeah a lot of people tell me like my game is like Javon Holland. So I like I like Javon Holland as well. So. I got you. So you want to put the wood in wood yard is what you're saying. You want to come down here and just just murder people, uh, fill oh, yeah. fill the alley on the on the run. Most definitely, most definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I guess my two like last questions that I'd pair together for you. Favorite part of Athens when you've visited so far? It can be it can be something on campus, a place downtown, something like that. But what's been your favorite part of Athens so far when you visited? Um, I'm a football guy, but I don't want to just say like football, like, like field and like the coaches, but I also just like, I just like the area of Athens. Like I'm not, I'm a type of guy that like, likes to go, go places when he's not chilling, but I'm also a guy that likes to chill a lot, just hang out and just, when I'm not doing football, I want to do something calm and chill, chill. So that's what I like about Athens. It's not too city. It's not too country. And it's just perfect, the perfect mix, I'd say. Andy Stowe think, thinks he has the answer down there. So, you know, uh, but uh, in, ter- in terms of in terms of getting to know the coaches and stuff like that, I, I assume the, the relationship gets even deeper once you become a commit. Who is the funniest guy that you that you deal with on the staff? The guy that you didn't expect maybe to be funny, but he's he's a funny dude when you're just talking to him and uh, and getting to know these coaches. Um. Coach, Coach Coop, you know Coach Coop, the recruiter. Yeah, <laughs> Coach Coop is funny, man. Like he be going, he be like hanging out with my mom and like my dad and just stuff, and they just tell me stories about how what he be talking about. And he's a cool dude. He's a funny dude, and he's real hip. But second, sec, I don't even want to say second because Coach Fran is funny, funny as heck, bro. He be just, <laughs> just the way he talks. He's just funny, like because he's from New Jersey. He got a he got an accent and stuff, so he just. Sometimes I'd be like, what did you say? I have to look it up on my phone. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, that's what he meant. But I, I mean, love Coach Brand, man. He's doing all kinds of stuff, bringing the mob squad, uh, you know, chain over there and all that yeah. for the DBs. So I'm sure yeah, you'll look it. forward to trying to win win that one day. Jed, uh, before we send it. him off, what do you got for Peyton? Yeah, I got a couple. We see we got a question from uh, John Adams down here. You, are there any of the – um? you know, the current guys in your class that you got in mind as far as a roommate? Like, who are you trying to, uh, you know, spend your first year in Athens with? Um, I don't really mind. Like, I'm cool with all the dudes, so I don't want to be picky. Um, <laughs> but if if Rayola comes, like, we talk about it. Like, I'll for sure, like, I'll for sure room with Rayola. He's a good dude, and I feel like we got the same mindset. And 
in terms of everything. Like, we you know, I feel like we both organize people who want to keep it nice and clean. <laughs> so we'll, uh, and we'll close with this because I'm a, I'm a attempt to be a golfer too. Would you rather lay a big hit on a ball carrier? It, it, what's a better feeling, a big hit, hitting a homer, or, uh, you know, sticking an approach shot to about eight feet on the golf course? Mm, I'll say, I'll say the, on the golf course, sticking an approach shot. I feel like that's, a, that's for Listen. sure better. Because, like, golf is so, like, golf is hard. It's so hard. Like, football is second nature. I mean, baseball, you get a hold of one, you know what I'm saying? You you hyped. But, like, golf is just so hard and people don't understand it, you know? It's just like. Man, like, but by the time I get older, I'm hopefully, hopefully, I'm pretty good. <laughs> See, you're you're already playing the long game, man. You can play golf forever. Football's go, football's gonna end one day, you know. But golf, you keep going on it. But Peyton, yeah. we appreciate you uh, coming on here with us. Uh, we'll we'll definitely get this clipped out, make a, a separate video so everybody can catch it later. But uh, thank you so much for joining us here on Rumors versus Facts, and we hope to have you on maybe back this summer after your OV. Yes, sir. Sounds good. I appreciate everyone. All right, thanks. thanks. That's Peyton Wood Woodyard there, number one safety, uh, class of twenty twenty four Georgia commit. So, um, guys, uh, would you would you glean from that that interview there with Peyton Woodyard besides that he is uh, an aspiring scratch golfer that's going to have the bug one day and probably spend way too much way too much money on golf like we all do? Yeah, I was going to say that that's uh, my favorite thing. No, but you know, it's I don't know if it was last week or week before, but we had a question of. <clears throat> you know, what guy we would kind of pick to be one of the recruiters, the, the, the outward recruiters of the class. And, and one of us or, or multiple of us brought up Peyton Woodyard. And I think in that interview, you see why he's kind of that guy. He's a very outgoing guy, charismatic guy. And it makes sense why the staff's telling him, hey, talk to Jalen Hayward. Hey, talk to Ellis Robinson. He talks to Dylan Riola every day. I mean, he's one of these guys that is very – um, outward facing and doing a lot of work in terms of trying to bring these guys in. So I think just overall you see his personality and and all that kind of stuff. It makes sense why he's uh, he's one of the recruiters in this class. You talk about his recruiting appeal and is is talking with Dylan Raola. A little fun fact for people here: he almost got Dylan Raola out to uh, Bosco with him. Uh, that was that was close to happening, but end up uh, end up going to Pinnacle over there where uh, Deuce, Deuce Robinson's from. Before we get to vault questions and everything here, do want to reiterate the what's going on the banner down there at the bottom. This show is brought to you by Turner Wooden Smith Insurance and in cooperation with Auto Owners Insurance. Guys, you need good customer service, reliable customer service, people that will actually pick up, answer the phone, not a not a robot, anything like that. Turner Wooden Smith, you're gonna get that personal uh, you know, relationship with your insurance customer service your insurance agency and then auto owners they provide great policies whether it's life home car business uh, i know my family can speak from experience on that it'll take care of you for sure so check out their urls both in the comments or scrolling across the bottom of the screen both in business for over 100 years so check them out today and we appreciate them with rumors versus facts now listen guys uh you know, we're going to be talking about visits coming up. Um, we got to get to vault questions here in a little bit, but we got some some visits that have been confirmed and things like that. I'll start off with, I know that uh, there's been conflicting reports at places and things like that about, you know, D uh, Dylan Raola, whether he indeed will come on that March 18th. I confirmed today that that is still the plan uh, for him to to be in Athens on, on March 18th, and that's the news he broke here on Rumors versus Facts a few weeks ago. Uh, I think back on January 30th it was he was on here, but um, yeah, still planning on being there. Ryan Puglisi is going to be there the same weekend uh, or the same part of the week, either the 17th or the 18th, depending on his what days his baseball games down in Florida end up being on. So I uh, could have two, one commit and one uh, – quarterback that they're heavily pursuing in Athens in either back-to-back -back days or on the same day. Um, so that's what you have going on in terms of the quarterback. Jed, uh, who else is going to be in town this spring? Yeah, I mean, you, you anticipate guys like K.J. Bolden getting on campus, uh, guys who didn't visit in January. I spoke with um, Edge, Dylan Stewart, uh, just a little while ago, who he visited for the national championship celebration, and he told me, that he's going to be back in Athens this spring. That's a, a Georgia-South Carolina battle. 
uh, shaping up right now. And then Justin Scott is going to be in town for his official visit uh, the weekend of G-Day. And, and yet G-Day weekend figures to uh, be a huge weekend just for the obvious reason that it's it's more or less a game day weekend, right? So, um, if, but if nothing else, maybe better than a game day weekend for the coaches just because you're not really stressing about game planning and you can maybe spend a lot more time uh, with recruits that are in town. So, um, yeah, I mean, it really kicks off right in the middle of March there. March 15th is is uh, pro day, and then and practice could start right after that. So that's when things are going to pick up. A lot of these guys, especially guys like Amir Jackson, who was offered out a tight end, offered out a portal, portal of town, not the transfer portal. Um, <laughs> he wants to get hit in town for a spring practice. I think a lot of guys, especially these guys that have kind of blown up, you know, that end up been offered, they want to get on campus. DeMello Jones will be back in the spring. Um, so, I, you know, the spring is when a lot of these recruitments are really going to start taking shape. So it's really going to get kicked off here in about, uh, three, four weeks. I spoke with Williams Nawanery, uh, six foot five, 255 pound, uh, defensive end outside linebacker hybrid type guy out of Missouri. Um, he's had an offer from Georgia for a long time. He'll be in town March 17th. So he's going to be there. Trent, uh, anybody else that we're, that we're missing is going to be coming for spring visits that, that we need to hit on before we talk about that first big weekend in, in June. Uh, nothing set in stone. I know Jimothy Lewis plans on um, visiting. And then um, I know we're go we'll probably confirm a lot more uh, this coming weekend at the Under Armour camp on Sunday. I'm sure there'll be uh, a lot more confirmed on that day. So um, I'm looking forward to getting out there when, and seeing – and seeing these uh, upcoming uh, seniors, upcoming juniors uh, get out there and, and compete. Absolutely. All right, now turning our attention to the official visits, Peyton Woodyard just broke the news here on our uh, on our show that his official visit will be that first weekend, uh, which is when Dylan Raul is supposed to be coming as well, which makes sense as close as they are from what he what he has said there. So he's really working him every single day. Um, we expect uh, Sammy Brown to be either either first or first or second uh, weekend there. Um, that, that's going to come in into town. Daniel Calhoun is, is going to be there. Uh, Jarek Gibson uh, tells UGA Sports that it's he, he's trying to decide whether it's going to be that first weekend or the second weekend of, of June there. So some big names. I'm sure these commits that are already part of this number one class, Jed, will be. Um, will be in there, uh, you know, recruiting these guys on behalf of Georgia. But anybody that I've I've missed that we know of, uh, kind of coming in already on those official visit weekends. Yeah, Aaron Butler as well, a receiver yeah. out of California. Which again, like I'm sure, uh, you know, Peyton Woodridge has got a got a relationship with him as well. But it, I mean, it's you know, last year this whole getting guys in the first weekend in June deal didn't exactly work out too well when you've got you know, Arch Manning and Justice Haynes and, and Caleb Downs, I think we're all three in town on that first weekend. So um, you can direct your hate tweets to at Jed underscore me for that. Yeah, um, no, but I mean, that's, that's, you know, you, you credit Kirby smart and that's, that's the the strategy they've come up with and, and they're kind of sticking to their guns on it. So um, they want to get these guys in. They want to set the bar high. I know Daniel Calhoun, I think has got an Alabama visit. There's a, a Texas visit. I want to say, and, um, yeah, I'm sure Aaron Butler will be going other places and all the like Trent said, we're going to be confirming more and more guys in the coming weeks, starting with Under Armour on Sunday in the uh, Atlanta suburb of, of Carrollton, apparently. But, um, hey, Juju yeah. Lewis is now the capital of Georgia. We have established this, Jed. That is, I uh, want to, they, wherever no. Juju Lewis is, that's where they're going to make the capital. So, transfer so it north a little bit, yeah, north <laughs> and east, yeah. north and east, uh, yeah. Um, we could just have it at Truist Park. I'll take that. But but no, it's that's going to be the big, like you said, Blaine, that's kind of been the established pattern here over the last couple of years is that first weekend in June is the huge one. So um, we, we'll see. It's it's already shaping up to be huge. And I'm sure as, as we as the weeks go by, we're going to be adding more and more names to that list. Trent, I mean, you, you know, a lot of people at Gainesville, I'm sure Gaines will take Juju Lewis over there. That, that put him real close to us right there in the backyard. We can go. We can just go cover at lunch. I'm pretty sure there'd be any any high school in the country would take Juju Lewis. So <laughs> absolutely, um, absolutely, James would definitely definitely take him. No doubt, no doubt. All right, here we go. Vault question, Jed. First one. Yeah, it says any thoughts on some guys that maybe most don't know about, but we have been building momentum with. Thanks in advance. 
who are some guys that are maybe going under the radar that you can think of that, uh, well, you know, first of all, <laughs> Williams Nwanery that I uh, spoke to today. I mean, that, that's kind of George has been talking to him, you know, or offered him about a year ago, but, um, you know, he told me today, and I'll have a full story on it tomorrow, that uh, Chidera Uzo Deribe has really been, you know, talking him up uh, and, you know, everything from on the field stuff to, to the shoe game. You know, they, they, Uzo Deribe is big on, on the shoes, apparently, and fashion is a big thing with uh, Williams and Wannery. So that's a guy at the defensive end position, uh, defensive end outside linebacker, hybrid edge player, whatever you want to call him, that's a guy to look into. Who else is a guy maybe going under the radar? Um, DeMello Jones might be one. Mm-hmm. Um, um, he, he wasn't even – I don't even think he was ranked before this last ranking. So nope. that's Yeah, that's a funny – like Amir Jackson is another guy. I mentioned him earlier. He was unranked. Didn't even have a – the poor young man didn't even have a picture on his rival's profile. And then, uh, you know, half the half the Southeast offers him. And, and it's amazing what happens after that. And he, and, and he told me when I spoke with him after the offer that in-state school, all that kind of stuff, that resonated with him. Um, I mean, I think Dylan, it, it, it's weird to say about the number 30 player in the country, but I feel like when we've kind of been formulating these edge, uh, you know, boards, there, there's Colin Simmons, there was King Joseph Edwards, uh, there, there, there's some of these other guys. And Dylan Stewart's a guy, listen, Georgia wants him as bad as as anybody as, at, on the defensive side of the ball. And maybe in this case, he told me he talks with Fran Brown, uh, Chidera Uzo Riba, and Kirby Smart on a, on a regular basis. And they, this is a guy that George wants as bad. As anybody in the class, and he's kind of like uh, Williams uh, Winery Blaine. He's he's six six, two forty, long, rangy guy. Fits that mold of of what Uzo Deribe has gone after since he took this job. So um, it, that he's going to be back in Athens this spring. It's a Georgian South Carolina battle right now, is what he told me. And um, you know, no timeline on the recruitment, so that's nothing's imminent or anything. But that's a guy that it seems like it's a name that's a little off the beaten path a little bit maybe just because he's up in the dc area but that's a guy that georgia really really wants and is in uh, pretty good shape with you don't hear about offensive linemen generally as much in ter- and you know they're just not as flashy in terms of stories and numbers and all that kind of stuff but did speak to jonathan daniels and did a piece on him not long ago and he's a guy that that really has kind of built a good rapport with uh stacy searles and and out of pensacola just a huge huge uh tackle prospect uh and you know he's a guy that that i think you need to look at probably making a return return visit there that could that could be there and then of course malachi tolliver did a piece on him but that's kind of that's kind of the gist of it for under the radar guys for right now all right let's uh hit this one and i'm gonna play the i'm gonna play the fifth on this one i think uh but there you go pa dog 610 jed PA dog. It's, it seems like we haven't had a lot of pa dog lately i uh, i missed our, our buddy here it says what are y'all's thoughts on king joseph edwards does georgia have a chance uh i think i think i think uh i think georgia has a a chance i think it's more the other way around uh i think some i think sometimes i think sometimes you have to uh there there's there's things that people have to work on and certain situations have to be worked on. Nothing's impossible. Could this young man end up at, at Georgia at some point? Sure. But I think there's some things that have to be worked on before that happens. He's going to his third school now uh, and hasn't played a lot of football. Okay. He's been injured, really has one, not even full year of tape out there. Um, so a lot of his, his stuff is on potential. So, Got a lot to prove uh, going to Mill Creek. We'll see how things uh, turn out for him there. But, um, you know, if he – obviously, if he proves to uh, be a integral part of that team, then that could change a lot of things for uh, King Joseph Edwards out there. All right. Uh, Jar 52, how is – this is not really a recruiting question, but how has Darius Smith – been looking and what are the expectations expectations for him this season trent i mean he was already contributing before he got uh, got hurt there earlier in the year yeah i think he, he could be one of these guys i mean you're, you're kind of looking at the other two edge guys as guys and, and it was similar to that um in, in the uh i guess back in 17 18 when uh, aziz ojalari was uh in that mix with the all the five stars with I guess Adam Anderson and Nolan Smith and all them guys and Aziz was kind of the guy that 
that kind of uh, that stood out among that that talented bunch. And um, so uh, I, I think he he's a guy that that this definitely uh, I guess under the radar because of the two guys in front of him. But I think he's a guy that could make an impact. Um, maybe even earlier than those two guys. I think he might be more college football ready, uh, especially the, the uh, Mpemba. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, Damon Wilson is kind of a, you know, a different type breed. But um, I, I do think he could he could see himself on the field, especially how thin George is at that position. And and he's a special teams monster. And, you know, you remember that field goal. If, if the Ohio State guy doesn't shank it, he probably drills it right into Dare Smith's chest. He was, uh, he was up high on yeah. that one. All right, uh, OU Herschel Walker said, what seems to be the biggest obstacle with Mike Matthews? You heard Peyton Woodyard bring up his name. Uh, when I speak to Ryan Puglisi, he tells me that, you know, he's working Mike Matthews all the time. They, they, they're they talking with each other. But still, just from things we hear, it seems like he's kind of uh, just at arm's length. He's not like in that inner circle right now of guys that you would say are, you know, red hot on uh, – on Georgia, but Jed, could that just be more his his personality and 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 the way he handles recruiting more than anything else? It could be. I mean, he's a guy you I mean, we, you know we've said this about Sammy Brown too. He's a guy that doesn't like to give a lot away when he when he speaks. Like for example, like when I spoke with Dylan Stewart, he's like, yeah, Georgia, South Carolina, bam. Um, Mike Matthews isn't that kind of guy. He plays it very coy. And his recruitment, I mean, it, it, it's we're we're kind of we're kind of. Um, past the i mean it, it's been a year now since his recruitment really took off which i guess it's it's still sort of young and, and notre dame's in there and some people don't you know it's it's not set which side of the ball he's going to play so there's, there's a lot of factors at play and, and it's so and listen it's georgia's not out of this by any means like i it, it's him us saying there's not he's not super high on not let's let's regroup georgia's georgia's still right in this georgia's one of the top contenders i would say it's just not like I wouldn't say Georgia's the favorite, but but Georgia is among Ten- schools that Tennessee are and Clemson. Harder. Tennessee and Clemson are the are the biggest obstacles <laughs> to be succinct, yeah. succinct with it. I mean, you know, it's just different style of offense. He also wants to play. He also wants to play basketball. Georgia reportedly has offered him an opportunity to play basketball. Auburn is trying to get in that way as well. I don't know how realistic that's going to end up being for him at the next level, but I think Tennessee and Clemson are the teams that you really got to work on trying to trying to beat when it comes Who to him. the last football player that played basketball and baseball at Georgia? Was Larry Brown? Fred Fred Gibson. Fred mm, Gibson. Yeah, I, was say. I know Larry Brown did also. But. Who's I don't even I don't even remember that. I, I'm, I I'm, didn't. I'm drawing, a, drawing a blank right now. Fred Gibson I know played there. Uh Andy Stowe, Trent, you can probably answer this one. Who sets the assistant staff and recruiting budget? Is that limited by the SEC, NCAA, or can UGA pay coaches as much as they want and have a recruiting budget as large as, large as they want? I, I know what I would say here, but Trent, go ahead and, uh, and tell them your, your answer. I mean, who sets the assistant staff? Oh, the recruiting budget. I mean, the, the, I guess Kirby Smart. I mean, I'm not uh, – well, uh, I wouldn't. Jared Moorhead, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, yeah, of course, but a lot changed when Kirby Smart came in, and he's, you know, he's always had, um, you know, Alabama. I thought Alabama always was had an advantage before Kirby Smart came because they always had more off the field staffers. They always had more, um, you know, analyst type people. And now Kirby Smart's built that up. I don't think there's a, um, I don't think there's a limit. I think there, you you pay for you know uh, however many you want to come. But I think uh, I guess Georgia has a limit uh, in their in their budget. But I, I don't think there's a, a necessarily number that that uh, the max you can have uh, for for off field staffers. Yeah, it, listen. Before NIL came into play and before the transfer portal, two things that have really uh, kind of changed the landscape of have and have nots in college football, it was how much, what's your salary pool for your assistants and the assistants to your assistants and how many of them do you have? And that's that's why there were the haves and have nots and the Georgias and the Alabamas and everybody else was already out ahead of everybody is because, you know, they had a bigger staff they could carry more of a workload and they were just outworking people by sheer numbers and being able to, to have, you know, 
have all those luxuries uh, afforded to them, that's still the same thing. Now you got to throw in, sprinkle in NIL and, and transfer report and all that in there. But there is no cap. And they, because until we get to a point where it's more like the NFL, um, where there is, you know, structure and how much you can pay, you know, players, how much you can pay coaches, like what the cap is, all this kind of stuff, then, you know, we'll see we'll see what what happens from there but yeah uh, very good question but yeah the answer is pretty much nobody regulates anything it's just yeah. how much can you afford the, and the crazy thing is the you know being an off-field staffer leads to other uh, just under these big programs like Georgia or Alabama just leads to other jobs i mean just look at Buster Faulkner who was offense coordinator at a smaller school came to Georgia and was just an analyst role. Just, just, I mean, you know, we, we knew of him, but if you ask any, many other schools, they didn't know him, but it led to an offense coordinator job at Georgia tech. So, uh, I mean, these, these off the field analyst jobs, you know, under, under programs like Georgia, uh, lead to bigger things as well. There are off the field analysts, you know, already being targeted right now, uh, at, at Georgia as, as we speak, uh, things like that. So, you know, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see what shakes out there. Um, I saw one guy; I can't remember his name. A uh, 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 used to be a special teams uh, staffer at Georgia. Just got a just got a job. Uh, you know, as an on field coach somewhere. So, listen, uh, it's you know going all over the place. Uh, Bryant Gross Armiento, who used to be a, a guy, you know, quality control coach at Georgia. He's just got an on the field job at Texas A and M. So, to your point. Those are important, and those help accelerate guys' careers for sure. All right, Jay, we got one from Night Dog. Yeah, what's the lowdown on Justin Green? He's listed in Trent's class prediction, but not a, not a lot about him as a player or or recruit that I can recall. Yeah, what's the what's what's the latest on on Justin Green? What do you guys heard heard on him? Uh, I mean, I just felt like. Um, it just, just from what I what I've heard, he he's one of the players. You know, there hasn't been a bunch about him. Just from what what I've heard from behind the scenes, cut type deal is Georgia sits in a in a good position for him. You know, there's a long ways to go, of course, but just just where it stands from uh, sources that we talk to, uh, I just feel like Justin Green is a, a you know a good chance as of today of, of being in that class. Yeah, in state guy, uh, four star, and you know Mountain View High School right out of uh, Lawrenceville there, so. Um, you know, we'll, he fits that mold that Chidero Uzo Deribe loves six foot four, 245 pounds. I mean, all of them, Jed, are in that, in that six, four, six, six, 245, 265 range. I mean, that's, that's, that's what they're looking for there on the edge. But yeah, I mean, he, he's, he spoke very glowingly in the past when we've talked to him about, about Georgia and how much that program, how much he, he admires the program and, and what they do. So, and I remember seeing him work in uh, in a camp last summer. I mean, he's a guy who who has a lot of talent, a lot of ability, and with that size, Georgia's obviously uh, obviously targeting him. All right, Night Dog has a follow up question, Jed. Yeah, is Daniel Calhoun a guard or tackle at UGA, and is a class of Calhoun and Jordan Seaton at guard, plus Jonathan Daniels and Malachi Tolliver at tackle an ideal class, or do they need more or a different combo? Well, first of all, Jed, speak to the first part. Uh, you've talked to uh, Daniel, and you've talked to you know people around there. Do you, you do you see him ending up as a guard or a tackle? Yeah, I've talked to some some Georgia sources that, that think he probably ends up at guard. Um, he probably could play tackle if needed, um, but I think right now the projection is uh, is probably tackle, which I think the rivals has him listed at about six six three thirty. I want to say, which which kind of is a little more reminiscent of some of the road grader types that uh, that they've had in the past. So I think that's kind of the projection for him right now. I'm not comparing his game to Xavier Trust by any means, but I'm just uh, just from the um, how, how he can play as far as, uh, you know, he'd probably be a guard that can play, maybe shift out to right tackle or something like that. Mm-hmm. Trent, I think if if they were to get Calhoun, Seton, Daniels, and Tolliver, Stacey Searles would be getting a raise and he would shake your hand off right now if you gave him that deal. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, that's so that, would, that would be the that'd be an ideal combo. That's what three what Calhoun and Seaton are top one hundred. Daniels is at about one twenty, I think, and Tolliver's a guy Tolliver's a guy, Blaine, you've mentioned that easily could and maybe should end up uh you know in the two fifty by by the time all this is said and done. So that yeah, that'd be a, that dog bump. 
<laughs> Dong Bong. Well, you know, there there is one person responsible for all these rankings, and he's and he's currently on this show. Uh, yeah, when not, Jed not, when Jed stuff. decides to you know <laughs> bump up the ratings because that's what he's directly right. responsible for, then you know we'll we'll uh, we'll go from there. All right, uh, we got one from R R Hall fifty five here. What is UGA's relationship with 2025 Buford offensive lineman Nikolai Brooks? Jed? That dude's huge, man. Uh, first of all, uh, I mean, six, eight. Eight. six eight is what he measured in at the last uh, uh, Rivals camp he attended. 340. And the thing is, he doesn't have, I mean, you watch him, it doesn't look like he's got a ton of bad weight on him. He's just like a really big. Dude, um, originally from Iowa, he moved to Georgia. Actually, trains a lot with uh, Brandon Jacobs, um, former NFL running back, and uh, Brandon's son and Nikolai are real close. They're both transferring to Buford this year. Um, Georgia has a good relationship with him. They were one of the. It might have been his first overall offer. Definitely one of the first two or three. And the, the relationship there goes back to Matt Luke, and then obviously Stacy Cereals has kind of picked things up there. So um, he was in town for the championship celebration um in uh in january and he's one of those top guys you know we we had our 2025 look ahead series a couple weeks ago and he's emerging as one of those guys and in state there's some guys you got nikolai brooks you got cortez smith you got mason short um you got Braden jacobs who georgia has offered i mean there there are some really good offensive line prospects in the state in that 2025 class and and uh nikolai brooks is probably at uh at at the top of the heap just with with his size and, and ability to move at that size as well yeah, but donut donut dog on the vault would tell you he goes to Buford. So, so let me, let, let temper your expectations. That's what that's what donut dog would tell you. I just had to give a shout out. He is the great Buford denier over there on the on the on the uh, vault, Trent. He's he's every school denier. He's <laughs> the, 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 the Roddy talks about months and itis. Uh, donut dog is ate up with it. I think over there in terms of anything Georgia. All right, Jay. We got one from Chubbin all day. Yep. Where do we st- Where do we Georgia stand with Deuce Robinson? And what would you say percentage wise that we landed? Trent, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, uh, the the longer this goes, I think the the bigger disadvantage Georgia has just for some fact that they've changed their offense coordinator. He's closer to USC. He's closer to the commits. He's close. He's got better relationships out there. Um, I don't think it's over by any means. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with his baseball. I don't even know if it started, but um, I would uh, you know, I, I think the longer it goes, uh, it, do, it does help out USC from the relationships. But uh, I, I still think it's fifty fifty. Um, at, at this point, yeah. If I was going to throw in baseball, I would give I was going to give the cop out answer of thirty three point three percent. You know, because that means equal thirds and throw it in there but that's that's what i was gonna say on that one uh all right we got one from big dog here uh it says at this point you feel pretty strongly about us georgia uh retaining the commitments of landon thomas and nicar and old west rival is attempting uh to get uh, and i guess the rest of the question come on to get in on this recruitment uh what do you think landon thomas and nicar you think they remain in the class I mean, I feel good about it right now. I mean, they're they're still taking their visits. And I know Nikar went to Florida State. I'm not sure if if uh, if, if Landon Thomas went down there or not. But but there's there's still. I mean, there's what uh, ten months, I guess, where these kids um, can sign. So I mean, I wouldn't. Um, you know, I I think Georgia lands it right now. I remember last year there was questions about you know Nikar and and you know he he had some. Uh, you know, off the field issues and people were wondering about that, but I, I think things seem to have uh, straightened out on that front. So, I mean, they're, they're both really good players and, and, you know, Landon Thomas is the number one tight end. Nikar is like the number seven receiver or something, top 50 players. So they're both guys that Georgia really wants in this class as of right now. So um, I feel good about it right now, and there's still a long way to go. And I expect them to take their visits and, and enjoy the process and everything. But um, yeah, I, I still would pick them to sign with George as of today. I got a question. Is Todd Hartley still on Georgia's staff? Exactly. Okay, there you go. As long yeah. as Todd Hartley's there, I think they both and end up. Who was – Todd Hartley, a guy who was involved in, in both of these recruitments, not even just Landon Thomas. He was in on uh, on both of these guys. So, 
yeah, that uh, as long like you said, as long as Todd Hartley's on staff, I'll I'll give Georgia a leg up on these two. All right. Uh I haven't kept up with many of the guys in terms of how they're doing that have transferred away. Uh, but Jeb, we got one from F McCrary Jr. here. Yeah, any word on how guys that have transferred, MJ Sherman, A. D. Mitchell, Ari Gilbert, Tresman Marshall, um, and any chance of Jaheim Singletary or Dominic Blaylock returning. Well, they haven't signed anywhere yet. They haven't committed anywhere else yet. So I'll answer that part of it. I mean, I guess you would always open up the door, but I don't know how many spots if, or if there is a spot available now. Georgia brought in seven DBs, you know, whether it be the portal or, or you know, through the recruiting class. So with Singletary missing this time and stuff like that, I don't see how that would be beneficial for him. But Trent Blaylock, I mean, he's he's been around so long that I'm sure he could, you know, find a way to to get back in there and stuff like that but but i mean he's he's got to be searching for an opportunity to to go go play somewhere yeah the the singletary one kind of surprises me because uh you know his you know where he played high school ball he, he had the opportunity to, to to go back towards home and and you know with, with him still being uncommitted it, it, that that's kind of surprising to me uh blaylock you know, he, he's just been through so much, and and is somebody willing to take a you know chance on his injury history? And um, I'm I don't know how many opportunities he's had uh, given to him uh, from other schools. You know, I could see him going somewhere like a Georgia State or something and, and contributing day one. Um, that one would be interesting just to see because I, I know uh, I mean I don't know for a fact, but I, I have a feeling that Dominic Bell would be welcome back with open, open arms. You know, I don't, I don't know the Singletary story. I don't know what's going on there, but um, I do think if Dominic wanted to come back, I do think he'd be welcome back, um, you know, moving forward. But uh, I haven't heard much about those guys. Yeah, as, yeah, as far as those other guys, I'm sure MJ Sherman uh, will will do fine out at Nebraska. Trez, <laughs> Trez, Trez Marshall, he, he's going to, uh, you know, and he's going to be an improvement, in my opinion, over Henry Toto. Like, he just is. And when you got Georgia's backup linebacker being an improvement over last year's Alabama starting linebacker, I think that tells you where things are uh, at this point right now between those two. Eric Gilbert, listen, you just got to hope at this point the young man's able to complete an entire season and be a productive part of a roster. That that would be, that would be a great uh, goal for him to accomplish – this year and then A.D. Mitchell, I'm sure, will be a stud for Texas because he he is a stud. I mean, that's that's there's no his route running ability, his quickness, that does not come into question. Maybe some other things and some of the fit and the mentality and stuff like that were questioned at times uh during it during his tenure in Athens. But listen, he's he can play and uh you know he's gonna have two quarterbacks over there and Ewers and and Manning that can try to you know, get him the ball. So I'm sure he'll have a, have a good year. And, and our last one, oh, yeah, yeah, he's got two, two rings. So he can, uh, he can go around and show those off down there in, uh, in Austin, Austin, Texas. He, can, he might, he might flash one of those at Arch if Arch starts giving him some lip over there, you know. Stetson's um, already been uh, showing him off in Texas. Uh, so <laughs> a little too much. He's <laughs> knocking on doors with him. <laughs> Oh, oh god all right uh c buck 11 jed you our last one here yeah what's the latest on Demelo jones and uh what position would he most likely play at georgia all right you said he's gonna be visiting this spring that he's already confirmed that that he's gonna be back he doesn't have the exact date yet uh where do you guys feel that uh Demelo jones will play should he should he end up in athens An athlete i've seen him do just about everything on the offensive side of the ball and then of course he, he plays defensive back as well what, what do you guys think yeah i mean he's he's a little bit like kj bolden in that, that he's just a really good athlete he plays really plays he's a great guy on offense i saw him make some great catches in the state championship game um he's told me that georgia's recruiting him as a defensive back fran brown's involved fran brown and kirby smart went to go watch one of his basketball games last month um so defensive back i would imagine as a a, a safety slash star um, obviously that is a lot when you think of Peyton Woodyard and Jalen Hayward are committed and they're going after KJ Bolden as well. So maybe a corner, I don't know. Um, but, but probably in that defensive backfield, as far as where Georgia stands, I mean, I think Georgia is, um, you know, w one of, if not the team to beat here, they, they offered him right at the beginning when his recruitment started to pick up in November. 
He came to the Georgia Tech game right after that. And, uh, you know, the, the staff is making him a priority, which, you know, an in-state kid from probably two, two and a half hours down the road from Athens is, is a huge deal. So um, I like where Georgia stands. It's going to be a big spring as far as visits go. And he's, he's going to have more time after basketball season to, to really get to a lot of places and 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 talk to coaches in person. But I, I like where Georgia stands as of now. No doubt. Anything uh, to leave leave it, the guys off with here, uh, guys and gals watching before we sign off? Anything you, you want to share? Uh, just, you know, like Trent said earlier, excited to get to Carrollton this weekend. And, um, you know, the, the, I think the varsities in Carrollton, from what I know, um, you know, I see the Fox theater while I'm in Carrollton and, and some noted Atlanta landmarks out there. Um, but, but we'll get to see a lot of these guys it, from, from looking mm -hmm. on Twitter, it's going to be a loaded, uh, camp roster from, from guys in Georgia, Alabama, I think even some Florida guys. So I'm uh, excited to see a lot of these kids in person and try to get a lot more of these visits, um, you know, confirmed and really start building things out for the spring and summer. I love ticked off Jed uh, at the at the travel the travel to Carrollton. That is uh, that is that's great. I love that. All right, it's just, so whatever. That's that's a that's a, that's an off air off air conversation. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is it for UGA Sports Rumors versus Facts, presented by Turner Wooden Smith Auto Owners Insurance. If you didn't catch it at the beginning, we had number one safety Peyton Woodyard on with us for an interview. We'll clip that up make a separate video for us so you can uh, rewatch that later if you're listening on the podcast version leave us five star review that helps out a lot if you think it's it's worth it uh you know rate subscribe turn on notifications all that good stuff youtube and podcast appreciate everybody tuning in each week you're the reason we do this uh, and oh i do want to announce uh, on wednesday uh, wednesday night we're going to have Rylan Goaty on with TK and Noshon, former Georgia Bulldog who's transferred to Mississippi State. So we'll get a little bit of inside perspective about what the locker room was like. Maybe a guy who who's a little bit more freed up to talk now and that he's not a member of the of the red and black. And then um the next Monday, we're going to switch. This show will be on Wednesday. Andy Stowe, if you're still watching, man, we're going to have none other than the phenomenal one. AJ Styles on next Monday night with, uh, yes, WWE pro wrestler, big Georgia fan. He's going to be on with Tavares King, you no know, Sean Marino, and I. And, and this this show will be moved to Wednesday. So for Jed May and Trent Smallwood, I am Blaine Gilmer, which we'll catch you guys next time on UGA Sports Rumors versus Facts.